Hello and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. What if a billionaire invested in Russia? Now, of course, as you know, the World Cup is going on right now in Russia. So it made sense to me to do this experiment in Russia. Now, I know what you're all thinking already. Aren't all Russian teams absolutely loaded already? A lot of them are, but not to the extent of a billion pound bank balance. So that's what I've done. I've gone to every single playable club in Russia, uh, all the way in the Premier League and in the first division, the two playable leagues available in Football Manager. And we've given every single team a billion pounds to spend and we're going to see what happens. Now, usually we start pretty far down in these experiments with some low ranked nations, see how far they can climb. As you can see here, the Russian Premier Division sitting sixth in competition rankings for all of Europe. Now, the aim of this experiment is to get the Russian Premier Division to be number one. Uh, it says up there, it doesn't say on the screen right now, but number one is the Spanish La Liga. That is the most reputable league in all of Europe. So the goal is to get Russia up there. What's really going to help this experiment as well, that the top team who finish first in division automatically qualify for the group stage of the Champions League. Second place qualifies for a, a qualifying round as well, the last qualifying round, which is good. A team in third goes straight into the group stages of the Europa League and two more teams go into different qualifying rounds as well. So there's five teams automatically going into pretty high ranking rounds of European competitions already. That is going to be absolutely huge and hopefully these Russian sides very, very quickly, hopefully within 10 years, will be constantly winning the Europa League and the Champions League. For this episode, though, we're only going to go three years in the future. We're going to see what happens in these first initial three years. Which massive signings are they going to be making? How far up the competition rankings will they be going? And will they actually start to make a dent into Europe and the European competitions? We're going to be keeping a close eye on the nation club coefficients. This is what determines how a nation is ranked and where it's ranked in Europe. Russia currently 7th with a ranking of 50. Uh, next season, it's suggesting it's going to be 40, but that's a bit different. It always changes this bit throughout the season. Uh, so it suggests it's going to go ahead of Portugal, but still be behind France and still a little bit away off these other top nations. So the money is in the clubs. All that is done. All that's left for us to do now is to go on holiday. Uh, we're going to return from holiday in three years' time. So uh, 2017 right now. We're going to come back 2018, June 2018. We're going to come back and see exactly what has happened. Right, so we're back now three years in the future, June 2020, looking at Russia. 26th in the world rankings, which is pretty good. They obviously had, uh, they had a decent-ish World Cup, maybe go into the Euros. Yeah, they're in the Euros, beat Switzerland 3 now. How did they do in that World Cup 2018 World Cup that's just gone by? Uh, they got to the second round, lost to Argentina. So it was all right World Cup for them, we've got to say. Got to the group stage pretty easily. Interestingly, uh, Italy won this World Cup, but they've not actually qualified for it in real life. So... Make of that what you will. Germany runners up, Spain third place. I think a lot of people sort of have Spain, Germany in their finals in real life as well. So that's interesting. A lot of the football manager teams think the same thing, even though it wasn't the real World Cup uh, with the real World Cup teams. Back to Russia, though. Things seem to be going pretty well for them. So let's have a look at some of these top clubs. We'll go into uh, St. Petersburg and then into the Russian Premier League, where what has been happening then? Well, there was a relegation playoff over there. We'll look at that in a moment's time. Uh, but as you can see, it's risen to sixth. Or was it sixth in the first place? I think it was sixth in the first place, actually. So it's not changed at all yet. So uh, it will obviously had a long way to go to catch up with these top five nations. Hopefully we'll see the gap has decreased and uh, Russia is right on the edge of overtaking France and Germany, for example. Right, back to this very first season then. Spartak Moscow won the league in the end on 73 points, which was pretty good for them. I think they were the reigning champions actually from real life. So good to see them retain their title. Zenit came second and CSK Moscow came in third, which is pretty cool. Now these three teams, and I think Krasnodar as well, probably are like the top four sort of sides in Russia anyway. So I don't think that's too much of a surprise. The rest of the Russian league, I'm, I'm not so sure on. So I don't know if Ural coming fifth and Akhmat coming sixth is, is, is different or unusual. But I presume it could be because I think Ruben Kazan are usually a side in Europe. Lokomotiv Moscow usually up there as well, I think. So perhaps they have come out of nowhere and not really done that well. How have they done in recent years, actually? Uh, Akhmat actually came third or fifth one year. I say they came fifth one year. That, that is literally the year we're looking at right now. So ignore that. Uh, that's their highest ever finish. So actually, yeah, Akhmat not usually up there. Pretty good for them. Ural, how have they been? doing euro came fifth uh and i think yeah 2017-18 that fifth place finish was their highest ever finish as well so good stuff for both of those sides 2018-19 season zenith st petersburg this time win the title on 71 points nine points clear of csk moscow uh, ruben kazan 
finished third. So they had an improvement from the season before that. It's actually haven't won the title uh, back in 2008 and 2009. So that was the highest finish since then, which is good. Spartak Moscow dropped down to fourth. Uh, Lokomotiv up to fifth and Krasnodar down to sixth. Akmat and Ural dropped down the table after being in the top six last time out. And the season that we have just had, CSK Moscow this time win the title on 64 points. Spartak Moscow in second on 60. Uh, Zenit St. Petersburg in third. Lokomotiv fourth, Krasnodar fifth, and Ufa coming in sixth this time. How do they usually do? In fact, they're a pretty new side to the Russian Premier League, I've got to say. Seventh in the season before we started, and then uh, seventh actually twice in a row by looks of things. 18-19 season. And then the 19-20 season, sixth actually. So sixth of the highest ever finish. Ruben Kazan just missing out by a single point on European football. So I don't think there's anything too surprising there just yet. Some interesting stuff being thrown up. Uh, we're going to have a look at transfers over the past three seasons. See what has happened. See if anyone massive has come in to Russia. Uh, looking down his first season though, most of his transfers look pretty into Russian transfers. The Krasnodar to Zenit uh, or Spartak must go to Krasnodar. Nikola Katic goes from Slavan Belupo to Ruben. Uh, well, actually, it's quite funny because uh, Nikola Katic plays for me in the Real Deal series at centre-back. So if you want to see more of Nikola Katic, come and watch the Real Deal series that I've got going on with Real Oviedo right now uh, in our third season. So not too long to catch up. We've not started yet. Or you can just start watching from the start of season three, whatever floats your boat. Gustavo Gomez moves from AC Milan to CSK Moscow and Roman moves to from Fenerbahce to Krasnodar. So uh, not many foreign transfers, but this big one up here, uh, Fedor Smolov from Krasnodar to Zenit, 23, right to 33 million. That is some big money, but I don't think that's actually that unusual for Russian Premier League standards. Season afterwards then, a lot more foreign transfers coming in. Uh, Tom Rogic from Chelsea to CSK Moscow, Godfred Donzer to Bologna to Moscow. Artem Zuba, Zelit to Lokomotiv Moscow, that's a big one, he's obviously doing pretty well in the World Cup right now for Russia. Alexis Blin, Toulouse to Ruben, again, some big transfers here, some of these names are, I'm starting to recognise, so they're making some decent transfers, and then in this season, we have just had Ruben Neves is the biggest transfer, Wolves to Lokomotiv Moscow for 33.5 million, rising to 45 million, that is a huge transfer for them. Again, some more big names coming. Maximilian Romero to Spartak Moscow from PSV, 28.5 million, round to 36. Issa Diop from Monaco to, uh, to Moscow, pretty decent transfer that as well. Some really big names actually starting to come into Russia now, so that is some good going. All right, we're going to look at European football now and see how these countries are doing in, in Europe. We're going to start with the knockout rounds, just on the grounds that these Russian sides should be getting to the knockout rounds of the Europa League at least. So we'll start off here in this first season, 17-18 season. Uh, in the Europa League. Krasnodar got there, but they lose 3-2 uh, to Galatasaray on aggregate. Uh, CSK Moscow there as well, but they lose on away goal to Athletic Bilbao, which is unfortunate. Uh, looking down his other side of the draw, Spartak Moscow there, they beat Apple 4-1 uh, on aggregate. So we've got one side into the second knockout round of the Europa League. Spartak Moscow though, in the second knockout round, lose to AC Milan 5-3 on aggregate. So not the best result for them, but pretty decent stuff. 18-19 season then, the only Russian side I can see is Lokomotiv Moscow down here and they lose 2-1 to Villarreal on aggregate. So not a very good year for Russian sides in the Europa League, which is kind of poor. I was expecting a lot more from them. So we're going to go into the 19-20 season and as we look down, Lokomotiv Moscow there once again but lose 3-0 to Chelsea on aggregate. Uh, but again, they're the only Russian side there, so something is happening in the group stages and they're not doing particularly well. Not a fan of that really, I expected a lot more from these Russian sides, but you know, we can't be complaining too much I suppose. It is early days still, there's still a long way to go in this experiment to see if they can win this kind of thing. We'll do the same thing for the Champions League as well, start in the knockout stages in the 17-18 season. This first year, no Russian side there, which is a little bit disappointing, although we can't really expect it off the bat because the money's only just coming at this point and it would be very, very difficult for Russian sides to get in there normally, let alone when they've just been given loads of money. So I can forgive no Russian sides being in the first knockout round so far. And that's probably why there were so many in the first season of the Europa League in the knockout stage. They probably all came third in their Champions League group. 18-19 season, though, things are a little bit different. Spartak Moscow get into the first knockout round. They come against Tottenham, though, and lose 3-1 on aggregate. But it's nice to see a, a Russian side getting in there, which is quite good. Spartak Moscow doing pretty well. And then the season afterwards, any Russian side, Zenit St. Petersburg are there, but they lose 7-1 on aggregate to Napoli. So that's not the best result. But good stuff from Russian sides getting into these knockout stages. I'm liking that now. Now, if we look at the nation club coefficient, we can see Russia here in sixth place. 
uh, currently on 48.383, uh, so a good long way actually off France, Germany, Italy. Uh, we need to get a lot more teams into the later stages of European competitions if they want to start catching up with these top nations. Coefficient actually is set to drop a little bit for the next season as well. Drops below Portugal, so that is that's not good. We want to see progress, so something has to change dramatically, I think, in Russia for, for them to actually start doing well. And actually, looking at this, Turkey as well will also go ahead of Russia next season. So it's not looking very good right now. We have to do something about this and maybe try and see if we can uh, tweak things a little bit just to help these Russian sides out. So that's it for this first episode of the experiment. Next year, we'll go five years in the future and see if there's been any improvement. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more Foot Manager action, and I will see you next time for some more billionaire action.